That was a Blitz progress report and history of my Dendrobium Victoria Regina, which I will repeat in a slower fashion throughout the video so that you can see why I'm going to share the information and observations that are coming up. Also, leading up to this video, I posted a community post asking if anyone had any questions about Dendrobium Victoria Regina, and Laura Stansfield was wondering what kind of climate this orchid typically requires and what you can get away with when growing it. So that is what I'm going to elaborate on, as well as some details that I have noticed about this orchid throughout the years that I've been growing it here on the patio in southern Spain. First of all, let me tell you that I had real hesitations about getting a Victoria Regina because of their temperature preference reputation being a cool to cold grower. While I have the right conditions from October to April, for six months of the year, the conditions on paper would be too challenging. And when I research orchids prior to purchasing them, I ask myself one important question, and that is, do I want to stress myself trying to keep an orchid through the time of year that it would pose challenging for me to manage the upkeep? Orchid growing should be fun for the most part, and if it turns out then conditions are too much of a challenge and I feel as though I may not be able to keep up, then the answer to the wanted orchid on the wish list is an emphatic no. Anywho, throughout my research faced with this question, it would appear that 50% of my conditions were perfect and 50% would pose a challenge. Normally, those odds I do not mess with, <laughs> but she is an orchid that I have seen around for many years prior to having the current collection, and I found her on sale, which made it possible for me to purchase two, just in case, you know. <laughs> anyway, turns out that as the canes bloomed out, I have three different ones. One presents itself a little on the pale side with a lot more white compared to the purple coloring. The second one is a lot richer and more generous with the purple coloring coloring, however not as deep purple as the third version has. It goes without saying that the deeper, richer purple variety is my absolute favorite. Now that I do have a choice and <laughs> trust, I would have been grateful to have this orchid do so well with the first version, but given the chance, the opportunity, the third version just blows my mind. Little fun fact that I've been able to observe throughout the years is that all the buds start green when they first appear, but very soon they will color up depending on the depth of the color the bloom was going to be or not be. If the bud maintains a greener color with a little darker burgundy forming, then the bloom is not going to be as solid a violet compared to a bud that turns a deep, rich, dark purple color. The color that I have observed on my solid purple buds resembles that of a black olive pre-processing. It is insanely beautiful, it is glossy and plump, well, the bud itself is just mind-blowing. And then of course I love the little touch of white at the tips of the petals and sepals. They always remind me of a litter of puppies that has dark tails and all you see is the little white tips of their tails wagging in a cute mass of fur balls. It's adorable and amazing all at the same time. I appreciate you clicking on this video and hope that you are enjoying the most sensational blooming of my Victoria Regina since her arrival on the patio. What took me so long to film this? Well, I was waiting for buds to open on the oldest canes this orchid has. The canes that are dangling straight down because this orchid arrived in clay pots, potted upright, and when I mounted her upside down, that was the look back then. To see buds coming from those canes, I am speechless. So now that they have bloomed out, I can show them to you and another little nugget of intel about this orchid has fallen into place. And that is, no matter how old a cane is, once the orchid has enough energy and reserves, buds will still grow on nodes that are at least a decade old, as long as they have not bloomed before. Why do I say a decade? Well, I'm glad you asked. The next thing I've noticed about this orchid over the years is that she is a slow growing continuous evergreen orchid and only picks up some form of growth speed from early fall all the way into early spring. So she grows in spurts in my climate, possibly yours, and that's why we're here about the tolerance, the ranges. And while she does not stop growing when the temperatures get a little bit up there, she slows down, which is understandable because in that way, this orchid conserves energy. So this translates into, if your temperatures do not reach 30 degrees Celsius ever, your Victoria Regina would be a continuous grower at a speed of growth that would not be deemed as slow. So back to the guesstimate about decades 
old canes. The growth you see right at the top, all by its lonesome, is a keiki that I took off and mounted up there in 2020 in a video early when I started this channel. That happened on the same day that I freshened the sphagnum moss for the first time, and we could see the amazing golden root tips of the orchid doing really well underneath the older moss. The keiki had roots, but it took four years for the keiki to mature, finish growing with the terminal leaf, and I believe it is actually going to push some buds. So, if the oldest canes are anything to go by, before I got this orchid, they are at least 10 years old, even if the pieces I got were divided from a specimen mother plant. So I hope that makes sense. If not, the comments are there for a reason where I can elaborate and untangle what I've just said or skip back a few seconds and listen again. <laughs> but what does all this mean for you if you're growing or considering growing this orchid? Okay, she is a slow grower when it comes to getting her established. A single cane can take four years to mature, possibly less if your conditions do not exceed her preferred highest temperature range. I have had some questions about the growth habit of this orchid in the past and I sincerely hope that the images you see, the progression over the years, gives you an answer for what you can expect if you're just starting with a new Dendrobium Victoria Regina in your collection and it would appear to look relatively small. Mine was small when I got her, but here we are five years later and every cane that has grown since leaves the first canes in the dust. Sort of. They're still there, dangling, in bloom. <laughs> anyway, so this also means that if you're dealing with an immature Dendrobium Victoria Regina, you can expect to have her bloom within three to four years. If they were to bloom sooner, then the blooms will appear on the existing canes on nodes that have not bloomed yet. If you are experiencing leaf drop, please do not think that is normal. This orchid does not go dormant, does not have a winter rest. On the contrary, as mentioned earlier, this orchid is a continuous grower. She will drop the occasional leaf, which in itself is a pretty sight as well because they take forever to drop and first turn a deep red, bright red, and eventually just fall off. However, a couple of leaves on older canes is normal. A complete loss of leaves in one fail swoop is a signal that there's something wrong with the orchid. Can happen if it's not watered regularly during active growth. And the same goes, the leaves will have the classic wrinkles, which will not get ironed out if the watering is then increased. However, it is a good reminder that more water is required if the leaves start to show these signs. The leaves should be glossy, rich, dark green, and have sort of a satiny sheen on them. While this orchid can tolerate direct sun during the winter in my climate, during the summer she gets bright shade only and lives under the portico of the blooming alley. However, once the temperatures drop and the angle of the sun is lower in the sky, she goes right out to the hedge because she totally appreciates the rain, even during cold night temperatures and rain. She loves it and this all triggers the growth to continue and not stall for too long. So I'm showing you a care card comparison based on what the care for this orchid is on paper compared to mine and the different conditions as well as the temperatures. I hope that this comparison will give you a great visual of the temperature tolerance and humidity tolerance this orchid has so that you have a good idea as to the variables within your environment. The main takeaways from this comparison from what I can observe and how I cultivate my Victoria Regina is the temperature and humidity range as per on paper as opposed to the reality of this orchid on the patio. The recommended lows are 12 degrees Celsius and the highs are 23 degrees Celsius. Well, mine lives outside all year round and handles lows of 5 degrees Celsius and has had temperatures up to 40 degrees Celsius in a summer when she was much smaller. Recommended humidity of 50% or higher are not met on my patio either. Here I average 30% within a calendar year. However, I did have a very high humidity summer in 2023, which was a blessing for this orchid. While the humidity was 70% and higher for the hottest months of the year, I noticed that my Victoria Regina did not stall in her growth at all. Previous years, she would slow right down during the months of July through to the end of September. So the humidity helped this orchid out tremendously to prove to me she is a continuous grower as long as the temperature temperatures are within reason of her preferred temperature high. But because my temperatures go much higher than her preference would be on paper, I counteract the stressful dry climate with water and water and more water. 
but no fertilizer because I have already used all the months with ideal temperatures and pumped her full of nutrients in preparation for the stressful times ahead. This way also the mount stays clean and salt free as is proof of the moss that rarely dies back during the hot dry months and we know what happens to a pillow of moss when the humidity and moisture is next to non-existent. So this orchid loves the water as does every orchid when in active growth but especially during a time of year when it is possible that the conditions start to become a challenge. Remember that water is a cooling agent as well. And a detail that Michael McCarthy made me aware of, he mentioned once that the fact that I have this moss that naturally grew on the sphagnum moss covering the root system is probably a great asset to keeping the roots cool which again helps this orchid out. Now if it is not exposure to rain I rarely miss the leaves of this orchid when it is warm and dry even with the airflow which this orchid loves. But dendrobiums have a knack of getting fungal issues very very quickly and I have not had any luck in treating fungal issues on dendrobiums without the orchid throwing a fit. So all I do is drench the mount when the conditions heat up and that may need to be done three to four times a day if things get really really dry and very windy. On paper it is also recommended that this orchid should be repotted or remounted in spring after flowering. Well I have had the honor to watch this orchid be in perpetual bloom throughout spring, summer and then again late fall or late winter all the way through to early spring <laughs> as the blooms easily last five weeks, when on earth would anyone be able to repot or mount this orchid? Well, as per usual, I always advocate for any repot to happen when this orchid is growing new roots. That is when it's got to happen, whether she still has blooms on her. As you can see with mine being an absolutely glorious bloom with new root growth. So if I were to have to repot her at this stage, it would be at this stage that I would repot her sooner rather than later. Because if you're going to wait for the blooming to finish, then you will find yourself in the dead of winter or mid-summer and unless your temperatures are as on paper you will risk having harsher conditions and by that time the roots may already be too long and the disturbance may result in them stalling. So get after a repot or a remount as soon as you see root nubbins starting. In my case I just put a mount on a mount so as not to disturb the orchid at all and even my moss is starting to transition onto the new mount. This way the orchid did not know any different and she just chugs along as you can see in this footage. My fertilizing and supplementing regime is pretty rigorous. I will show you a repeat of what I do for my dendrobium of film. It is exactly the same with the exception that I do not fertilize during the months when conditions may be too hot and the orchid slows her growth. And I go gung-ho during the winter months with the routine you see on the care card. So I back off on any kind of fertilizing supplementing regime during the months of July, August and September in my climate here which is dry and hot as opposed to what the care requirements are on paper. Having hesitated even to get a Victoria Regina in my conditions and my climate, I cannot tell you how relieved I am that this orchid is doing so well on the patio. I was really apprehensive about getting her. I was even prepared to bring them out indoors during the months of July through September just to keep her cooler. Turns out she has never been indoors apart from on the day of her arrival when I took this picture. Know that you too can grow this orchid because if she can do this in southern Spain then it is game on for you and what you can achieve with yours. Please let me know if you have any questions based on what I have said here. I hope that I could prove what I was saying with the images, the progress since she arrived on the patio, give you a realistic time frame of what to expect and when based on the five years I've had this orchid. As well as I hope I have given you a window of conditions that this orchid is capable of tolerating so that you too can grow this orchid and eventually enjoy something so mind-blowingly beautiful that I am currently blessed to have on the patio. If you're still with me, thank you so much. Can I just show you something else? Just really quickly, I'm just going to slide this one in and that is my Dendrobium unicum with the rich orange color, blooming at the same time as the Victoria Regina. Look how beautiful these colors complement each other. I just can't. I just can't. 
While the Victoria Regina is not fragrant, the Unicum makes up for that with her Tangerine Body Mist fragrance. I love this combo and am so happy to have this happen year in, year out in the blooming alley. And with that being said, I would so appreciate it if you would give this video and my dendrobiums a thumbs up. And if it's not asking too much, please subscribe to the channel for all things orchids. The good, the bad, the ugly. Today it was the sensational. Thank you so much for supporting the channel in all the ways, as well as watching the video to the end, because this gives me the opportunity to wish you a beautiful day, on the condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.